I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started and uh, spend the next uh, 10 minutes giving an update of something that I have been involved with since the early 80s, and that's the development and studies of antiandrogens. I've said this for, for 30, 40 years. The mechanism of action of antiandrogens, really, if they work, should be the best treatment for prostate cancer. And um, to block the tumor of testosterone, and at the same time, not lower testosterone. So uh, an antiandrogen, uh, as you well know, blocks the binding of both testosterone and DH2 to the androgen receptor. And if you can effectively do that, you can effectively re reverse that the, the translocation of the nucleus and binding there. You've got a home run. You don't need anything else. The problem is, is that antiandrogens are good. They, they're first, second, and third generation. But what's happened is that they are not uh, perfect. This is sort of the history of antiandrogens, uh, starting after Huggins and Hodges. But the first one that was introduced was synthesized was by a friend of mine, Rudy Neri at Sharing. Great guy, 1967. That led to flutamide, two tablets, three times a day. Then along came second generation Casidex. We did a study with flutamide showed that adding it to ADT improved survival rate by six months, and that ADT was the utilization of an LHRH sub-Q injection. So that was in 1989. And then biclutamide, uh, nulidamide came around, and then there was a void, and then all of a sudden we had the development of the third generation antiandrogens, and there are right now three of them. Several years ago, we published a review article in the Journal of Urology on androgen receptive target treatments for prostate cancer, 35 years of uh, progress with antiandrogens. And you can't read the names of all the people there, but there was really the pioneers that, uh, that were there that were involved, David McLeod and the group from the U uh, England, Mario Eisenberger, and of course, Fernand Labrie from Canada, who was the person that really uh, put forward the concept of combined androgen blockade. Novel hormone therapies have gone from a couple little studies to all of these now. Look at all these with, that involve mostly antiandrogens, and um, they are Prevail and Terrain and, and uh, Prosper uh, and Spartan and uh, Latitude, and now it's all moving up from from advanced disease, uh, non-metastatic castrate-resistant disease, and, and so forth. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So the prostate cancer continuum, antiandrogens are the backbone with ADT, effective ADT. And as the other day, I talked about deliver, delivering ADT on time, and 84% of the time, we didn't. And we have to really concentrate on, on delivering it on time with effective agents. We have castrate-sensitive and castrate-resistant spaces. And in the castrate-sensitive space, we have the, the, the use of a newly diagnosed disease now, the, the, the use of antiandrogens early along with doublets with combined androgen blockade, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Castrate-resistant, non-metastatic castrate-resistant disease, uh, the backbone of treatment. This is an iatrogenic disease. We create it to space, but we also create it a treatment. And three large studies have shown you can impact progression and survival, and it's not lead time biased by utilizing these antiandrogens. So now the continuum continues. We have studies now with newly diagnosed metastatic disease with not only docetaxel and abiraterone, but also apalutamide, enzalutamide, and also uh, reporting very soon darolutamide. A lot of action this, uh, at these meetings. Look at these meetings, ESMO, ASCO, AUA, and, and so forth, GUASCO, uh, the GU Cancer Symposium, PCF, a number of different presentations this year already on antiandrogens. They are taking a significant role 
and that. And we also have things with new things happening with, with PARP inhibitors and, and a lot of trials are ongoing with ADT alone. I don't know how many of you remember, it wasn't that long ago that a medical oncologist here in, in Southern California was treating patients with newly diagnosed disease with, with ADT for a year and then following on with antiandrogens. Um, that caught a lot of, uh, uh, he caught a lot of flack, so to speak, for that. But you know what? It's not, it's something that needs to be re-looked at with uh, our current, current armamentarium of therapy that we have right now. So we have these, we have these new antiandrogens out there right now, these novel new therapies, uh, enzalutamide, apalutamide, and darolutamide. So it's come a long way from where we were. One of the things that I think is very important is contained in this particular uh, table, and it, ca it looks at the side effect and safety profiles of, in these studies, Prosper Spartan and, and the Aramis trial of the antiandrogens, compared to the placebo. And it was pretty good. I was, I was always worried that we were going to tra have a, a, a trade-off of significant side effects with this. And in fact, if you look at it, and I, I don't have this slide in here, the quality of life issues that we looked at, there wasn't a big difference in those. This is Radar 5. We just published this uh, in the Journal of Virology this year. And what it did is said, hey, we need to rethink our way we look at prostate cancer from localized biochemical recurrent and advanced disease. And we have something called transitional cell disease state. And what that is, it's, it's sort of a bridge between uh, where we have metastatic hormone sensitive and non-metastatic castrate resistant. If you sort of look at these two together, they have a lot of things in common uh, in the way of survival rate. But the most important thing we want to do is keep people from crossing the line into uh, metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. There's a lot of other things ongoing right now. We're seeing triplets and uh, the PEACE trial that looks at that, and it adds abiraterone and chemotherapy. Um, this is a trial that, that you're going to hear a lot about uh, as urologists, and it's, and it's triple therapy. There are some issues with this. It was uh, adjusted several times along the way. Um, and one of the ones we're really waiting for is the darolutamide trial, which is darolutamide chemotherapy uh, and ADT, which should be reported in the next couple of weeks, I think. But the PEACE trial is something else that, that, that emphasizes what we've been saying for a long time. Every cancer you cure, it's not treatment A followed by treatment B followed by treatment C. It's a combination up front. You don't cure lymphoma by using cytoxin alone, you use CHOP. You don't cure testis cancer by using cisplatin alone. It's a combination. It's when bleomycin and velban and other things were put in that we saw that we were actually curing people. And it's taken us a long time to come this way with prostate cancer, and it's good to see that's happening. One of the trials that was negative and this is something you have to keep in the back of your mind, and a lot of people uh, do, was the SWOG trial. And it looked at a uh, TAC-700, which was a drug somewhat similar to abiraterone, a 1720-hydroxy lyase inhibitor. And what it was is randomization here between that and LHRH and bicalutamide. This is important because of many of the trials that were done with third generation antiandrogens did not have a active antiandrogen such as bicalutamide in the in the uh, observation arm or the or the control arm and what was found here is here are the the trials with antiandrogens with the exception of charted and what we see here is that in the control arm, the survival in months in the SWOG trial was 70 months. And uh, there wasn't a big difference in, in the treatment arm. 
what we, what we saw in these other things are in the, ex in the experimental or new arms here of these, of these trials, what was uh, in looking at high volume, low volume, overall and high volume disease is that in fact the overall survival did not pass the control arm here in the uh, SWOG trial. So what can we say? I have to say anti-androgens are here to stay. They're an important part of our treatment modality. Thank you.